Remeshing is generally understood as the process of reconstructing any given input geometry while satisfying certain topological requirements like a specific amount of output polygons or surface details. At the same time, the reconstructed geometry must either match or closely approximate the input geometry. Additional texture data, like normal maps, can be generated in the process that can be used to authentically replicate the shading of the input geometry, even when going from multiple millions of polygons down to a few thousand. Remeshing is a powerful technique that allows artists to retarget any kind of input geometry or to discover new workflows as to how 3D assets can be created. But there are several reasons why remeshing has not been adopted as a standard workflow for 3D productions. The first reason is that remeshing process itself can easily run for hours or even days and can require extreme amounts of memory. The second reason is that remeshing can only be used if the input mesh meet specific topological requirements. For instance, a clean topology without any degenerate polygons, or even more problematic, the geometry must be fully watertight, which is rarely the case for actual production assets. With Insulad, these problems have finally been solved and remeshing is now an accessible tool for every artist. In this video, we're going to look at how to get started with Insulad's remesher in a wide variety of different scenarios. In later videos, we're going to take a look at more advanced workflow such as complex retopologies and real-time ready kit bashing. So taking a look at this troll, we can see that right now it's 127,000 triangles. It is also made up of multiple textures. So um, you can see that there's multiple pieces and some of these pieces have different texture sets, both in terms of a color map and a normal map. So if we open this up, we can see that there's the color map for the skin, there's a color map for the mouth, um, there's a normal map for the entire troll skin, and then the, the cloth, pants, um, there's a color map and a normal map for that as well. And what we're going to use is we're going to use the remesh um, tab inside of Insulad to create a whole new low poly mesh. And what it's going to do is it's not going to do a new low poly mesh for each individual object, it's going to create a new mesh combining all of the objects and all of the textures together. So let's take a look at how we can do that. For first off, what we want to do is we're going to target 5,000 triangles for this. So we're going to go down from 127,000 to 5,000. So in this remesh tab, I'm going to go to maximum triangles and then hit 5,000. So now we're set to go. We're, we're going to have maximum triangles of 5,000 uh, and everything else we're just going to keep as is here. So let's go over to the, the bake output. And this is where we're gonna tell Insulad the size of our texture, um, where we wanna put the textures uh, on the bake and, and, and what textures we do wanna bake out. So let's bake out a 2048 at 2X super sampling. What that's gonna do is it's gonna bake out a, uh, a 4K texture and then size it down. So we get a higher, higher resolution in that end result of the, the 2K texture. Uh, we have dilation for the, the pixel padding. And then down here, we also have options for our normal maps. And one of the options here, which is really neat, is the uh, PNG 8-bit dithered. And what it's going to do, it's going to take the 16-bit normal map that gets baked out, and it's going to size it down and dither it to reduce um, banding inside of your normal maps. Usually when you have a normal map and you bake it out at 8-bit, there's a really good chance um, during compression that, that it's going to uh, band really badly if you have a lot of shading inside of your normal map. So this is a great way to reduce that and really minimize that result of that banding uh, for the normal maps. So we're going to select that. And the maps that we're going to bake out today is just the tangent space normal map and a custom material texture. So we're going to take all of the uh, custom texture that's already done on this high poly model and bring that over to the low poly model, um, including the high res normal map that is on here as well. This one does have a custom normal map with like lots of veins and other things. So we're going to transfer that over as well. And one other thing to take a look at is um, you do have an option down here for tangent space or for our tangent space normal. We have an option to, to bake out at uh, DirectX or OpenGL and a couple, a couple other options there for you as well. And so let's take a look and tell us where to output. So we're just gonna output uh, right here and we'll just 
right to this folder. I'll go to the demo folder here and we'll just name some new ones here. Select those and below that we have the option for file name format. So you can see the configuration for the output name is right here. They have a lot of different options that we could put in. So we could uh, select the year right here, put it right up front. And now we have, I got a little extra space there. So we have 2017 and then this is a generic name. So we're gonna get the name of our mesh and then we're gonna get the texture type. And then there's an index number and a random. So we could just move those off if we wanted and we could have the year and then the name will be troll. And then at the end for the texture type will be the, the map types that we did bake out here. So let's go back over to the remesh tab. And this is all set up now. So all we have to do is select our troll and hit remesh selected meshes. So again, this is gonna be really, really quick and to highlight all the things that's going on right now, we're baking out multiple 4K textures. We're creating a brand new mesh for our um, new low poly troll. And we're also generating UVs automatically for it as well. So low poly UVs and final big textures with the color maps included from there, uh, from the high poly as well. And one thing is that it's gonna bake out two normal maps. Um, behind the scenes and then it's gonna combine them back together. And those two normal maps are gonna be the low poly to high poly bake. And it's also going to uh, take the existing tangent space normal map on the high poly model and convert it to the, convert the tangent space to the new mesh. And then it's gonna combine both the new converted tangent space model uh, normal map and the baked high poly normal map together to give us a good result uh, for our new low poly model. So let's go ahead and move this off to the side. And so what you can see is that now we have two trolls here. The one on the left is the high poly one of 127,000. And we have a, a new troll over here at five, exactly 5,000 triangles. And if we take a look, we've got a pretty good transfer uh, between the two. And what you'll notice as well is that all of the meshes were combined. And before they were multiple meshes, even up in the the teeth and the eyes, and now everything is combined together and baked down all, all as one thing. So this reduces our draw calls, and reduces our texture memory, because now instead of using three sets of textures, we're using one, and we have a pretty good result here. So let's take a look at, at the UVs here real quick. And what we have, is we've, we've got, these are the automatic UVs that we're creating. We've got about 40, 47 shells, and you can see of all the slots uh, and, and slices around the edges here of, of where those exist on, on the model. And what you'll notice is that if I select these, we've got some seams right here, and I can go ahead and hide them, and very, very hard, hard to see those seams in here. If, if not, I, I can't even really see them unless I, I click on the model and see them right here. So. Part of that, and the reason that's happening is because of the the pixel padding and the bleeding out of the uh, pixels at the edge of the UV borders. So let's hide the UV shells. You can see that right at the edge of the UV borders, those last pixels get bled out to the side, which then hides any kind of seams uh, for, for our mesh. And the last thing to look at here on this mesh is some cleanup that happened behind the scenes. So you see we went from very high poly to very low poly here. And our high poly mesh does have some errors in the back. Um, looks like some uh, some holes or some polygons uh, s slippings through to the either side. So we've got some errors there. And you can see that Instalod, when it created its brand new mesh, it fixed all of that and got rid of it and, and didn't bring that those issues over. So now we have a very good end result mesh with both a new color map and normal map. And the, the normal map is a combination of both the high poly information difference from the low poly and also the high poly normal map that exists only on this high poly model. And those two were combined onto our low poly model here. So that's it for this troll. And we're now going to move on to a few other assets and showcase the remesher on those.